it's May, the peak of springtime where I live. Flowers in full bloom, air that smells like heaven, and the time to put on lighter prettier outfits. I love dresses. I love my family's garden. I love when my children spend a lot of time outdoors, collecting sticks, cycling, and getting their knees dirty. I love picnics. I love hiking on dry soil. I love the rays that come through the leaves and flowers. Simple things do make me happy. But on another side of the world, perhaps another town or a street, there will always be people suffering. And oftentimes it will be things that they cannot control. I can't help but come back to these thoughts and news are plastered with stories that remind us of others' suffering, wars, poverty, dysfunction, lies, abuse of power. Yes, I do turn them off. I don't read the news all day. I don't participate in opinion wars online. But somehow these thoughts still linger on my mind. And I'm sure you think about them too. But the question is, how can you reconcile knowing that the world can be harsh with welcoming joys in your own life? I know that the audience approaching this question might be diverse. You might be someone who is enduring great suffering right now, greater than mine for sure, and say that you need some relief but don't know how. The fact that you're so sensitive to all this pain in the world is not making this ordeal any easier. Or you might be on the opposite side of the spectrum, the escapist who does not want to be inconvenienced with the burden of empathy. Life is short, enjoy your own is what you say. But just because empathy is a burden, it doesn't mean that it's bad, it just depends on the dose. As Fyodor Dostoevsky wrote in his famous novel, Crime and Punishment, pain and suffering are always inevitable for a large intelligence and a deep heart. And I believe that this applies to the topic at hand. If we use our heart, then we will always be conscious of the suffering out there, close to us or far away, and be touched by it. The question is, what action do we take with this feeling? And whether it's compatible with moments of joy? Online opinion wars about politics and global affairs and I mean a huge majority of them go nowhere. You might care and be angry about someone's opinion, but you will never change it. People who are agreeing with you already belong to your tribe. But you're not convincing people from another tribe much. Sure, there might be a few minds who are already on a fence, who might be swayed by articles or reflections from their own life. But I've never seen anyone actually change their mind based on hearing someone's witty expressions. So just stop it. You're wasting your energy in a wrong outlet. There is always going to be a certain amount of helplessness when it comes to correcting injustices and making people's lives better. The bigger your status in a society, the easier it is to have influence, like organizing events and services, being philanthropic, etc. The other factor is how important this issue is to global affairs. The more local and less corruption, the more likely it is you're going to influence it. But no matter how much you care, there are just certain things that are out of your league. If you want to talk about them online, fine. Share the articles, the data, find out if that convinces some people. Maybe it will have an effect on their voting habits. But to argue, call names, spread sarcasm, it's all a waste of energy. It goes nowhere. This type of activity also makes us agitated to the point where we're not spending our energy wisely. If you really want to make a difference in the world, go out and direct that energy towards a project in your local community. Do something special for your friends and family. Pitch a novel idea at your work. Caring about the pain of others is only good if you can direct that pain into some results. So go out and create that positive change not just ramble. Then, on the other side of the coin, you have this whole concept of letting go of things you can't control. And I'm not into that either. Let me explain why. 
I know a lot of spiritual gurus suggest adopting this approach and just focus on your immediate life, and I agree with them to a certain extent. If by letting go, you mean not engaging in futile action like online wars and angry protests, then yes, I agree. It does keep you sane. But there is a dark side to thinking this way too. Because it makes people ignore good things that they can do at a local level to make someone's life easier. If immediate life is all that matters, then you're mentally absent from things where you can exercise your sympathy and actually make a difference. Suppose you're someone with disposable income and resources to do that. But since you're stuck in that just let go mindset, you remain blissfully ignorant. You have the strength to help, some flexible hours, and you're not using that energy. So yes, it's still good to care, to have others pain on the back of your mind. What about joy? Is there room for it if empathy makes us sad? Experiencing happiness is not ignorance, is it? These are challenging questions for the empathetic types, and I've dealt with this dilemma quite a bit. I found a simple answer at the end, and simple in the way it sounds, but complex in the way it's applied. Here it is. Learn to love in action. Love is a verb that creates the feeling of love, a noun. Love creates healing, connection. It might come with effort, some discomfort, but the result will be joy if you're dealing with warm people. Of course that love must also be an action towards the self and others, both. Not one or the other. Dignity and value for all. The truth is, most of us who call ourselves empathetic are not actually practicing it. We mostly talk about feeling depleted from caring about others. Maybe we're not caring about ourselves much, which is one element. Another element is doing good things for others mechanically, not from the heart. We need to actually witness what healing feels like firsthand. And to do that, we need to enact it in a sphere of life where we do have some control. It might be looking at our existing relationships with fresh eyes, taking the risk of changing our temper or assumptions and see where this takes us. It is also in good acts of self-love to fill up that glass. My point is that practicing love isn't easy, but it is through the verb of love that we can feel the noun of love. And when we love, we heal ourselves and others, so we know what we're comparing pain against. We're not just numbing ourselves by hearing about pain on and on. We seek the alternative and feel the joy when we apply it. I don't have keys to your heart or know your life. I can only give suggestions based on my own experience. My life isn't sugar-coated, but I have things to be grateful for. Simple things. That's what I focus on. No, I'm not passive. I work towards a brighter future every day, but it would be harder to do if I was driven by negativity. And you too, wherever you are, can be grateful for the simple things that you already have. I suppose the old-fashioned way of talking about this went along the lines of if you remember how crappy life can be elsewhere, then you'll whine less about yours. This sounds harsh for sure. Suffering can exist anywhere, but there is also truth that some of that suffering can be self-inflicted because their mind focuses on negative things more, the what-ifs, while ignoring those to be grateful for. And it just so happens that in places where there are no famines and no wars, Pockets of sunshine are more visible if we open our eyes to them. I invite you to experience more peace in your life by being grateful for simple things. For me, it's having clean shelter, food, family and friends, working on this channel, a healthy body. I know your list might be different. Maybe you have a more difficult life than mine. But think about it this way. I used to be more negative so five years ago, my gratitude list would have been shorter. So maybe if you try stretching your heart a bit, you will also expand yours. Just try. So, 
acting out love, calls us to make a difference by turning pain into healing. All is cynical anxiety from the opinion wars or withdrawal of indifference don't have the same effect. Right now I'm practicing love as a parent of young children, but also through my other relationships, which need medium maintenance effort to stay strong. In the future, I'd like to improve lives in my local community through some volunteer work. It's not self-denial to think about making a difference in people's lives, practical difference. So turn off the social media feed, stop indulging in excessive leisure, and turn healing into action. Even if you're not wealthy, you can still give someone a piece of your time. I believe that's the most practical way of consolidating empathy for pain with a desire to expand joy. And then there's pain that is distant, far away from me. And I've accepted the fact that I can't make it go away. Activism and protests can only do so much unless they're massive on a national scale. And then they still have to challenge corruption, which is a powerful force which makes the elite resistant to change. But I want to talk about prayer. Prayer, depending on your spiritual background, can be about wishing well in this earthly life or asking a higher being to grant peace to a deceased soul. It's one of those things that has no data supporting it. And it's also so associated with those old fashioned ways. So it seems silly to some people. You know, I'm not particularly good at praying. I don't pray that much. When I do, distracting thoughts enter my mind. But when I concentrate harder, a ray of love fills my heart and something tells me that help is coming. Perhaps it might not be an escape from earthly suffering, but spiritual relief for sure. No, I'm not trying to sound naive. It is what it is. I don't think that connecting to people is a waste of energy. If it can translate into some sort of action later on, then I should nurture it. I don't want to be numb. I want to pass on the light from the candle, however helpless we both seem. A light that can shine inside someone else. A band-aid for pain.